When you're shooting video, you should be looking at the camera because what we want to do is we want to create uh, an intimacy between the person talking and the person watching. So as much as possible, I'm looking right there. I'll refer to my notes so that I can uh, catch up on what I'm supposed to be saying, uh, and I'll, I'll often cut out the bits that I'm where I'm looking at the notes uh, because you don't need to see me looking at the notes. But when I'm looking at the camera, right at the the part of the camera that's well, not the phone in general, but there, right where you are, I'm talking to you. So now if I look over here and talk to this empty space, you're now part of my conversation with somebody else. Now if this was an interview, and the interviewer was over there, I'd talk to the interviewer, and you'd be party to our conversation. But since I'm talking to you directly, this is where I want to be looking. So there's your distinction. If it's an interview, if you're your interview subject should be looking at, if you are interviewing somebody, you stand beside the camera and get the person to look at you. And if you're the person who's, if you're just delivering straight to camera, then look straight at the camera. The next thing is, don't use a script. Because when you use a script, it, it really limits the involvement. So here's an example. I put my glasses on and let's see. Reading from the script. Don't use a script. A script will make you stilted and people can see that you are reading. For a scene like this, I want you to communicate directly with the viewer, look straight at the camera. Now you notice how that was clearer. I presented the words more clearly, but there was no connection between between me and the camera. And for that reason, I really don't like using a script. Even if you put the script up beside the camera and you print it out in big letters, your people will be able to see your eyes following the words and it just doesn't work. If you have an auto cue, which is an expensive device, which means that you can read the script right over where the camera is, well, go for it. But I don't think you do have one of those. Uh, that's what they use on TV for the, for the newsreader so that they can be looking at the camera while they're actually reading. Um, it's far better to, to either have a script, have a page of notes, refer to your notes and then go back to the camera. That's the old school TV newsreaders method. Um, or just simply to wing it and um, stop the camera or to, to wing it and then cut the good bits out later. One method I find that does work well is to have a sheet of bullet points um, pinned up beside the camera so I can just glance at a sheet of bullet points and that'll remind me of what topics I have to cover. I have to talk about this, I have to talk about that, I have to talk about that. And it means that they're in a nice sequence as well. Of course I can always get that I can always put the sequence together when I edit it, but uh, that can help to get a, to get all the speaking done more quickly if there's a, a sheet of bullet points just to the side. You, you only want bullet points. You only want things just to remind you what you're going to talk about. You don't want to actually be reading every word. It's helpful if you can get the whole presentation in one. Uh, if, you, if you can get it all in one, that will save you time editing later. But realistically, it's more likely that you're going to get part of the presentation now. You, the, the, the one take might have a really great start, but then you, you muck it up at the end. And, but there's another one where you started off and you made some serious errors at the start, but you got a good end. So you're obviously going to take the two good sections and use those rather than, uh, rather than trying to get everything perfect all the way through. If you've got chunks that are right, that's useful to edit because then you'll notice how you don't notice, you don't see many of the edits in the videos that we're watching here because uh, I've got those cards. I, I try and get each chunk right so that I've got a, a section, uh, a chunk on a section of topic and I can cut that out and it's much easier. Uh, it's much easier to do it to get a, a decent looking result without too much surgery. Before you start talking, look at the camera. When you finish talking, look at the camera. Try not to have movement going on at the ends and the starts of each topic section because those are the points you're going to edit. So I need to make sure that I don't go, what's my next thing? It's the blah, 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 talking to you. Oh, and I'm not going to have a good cutting point. I want to go, that's what I'm talking about. Look at the camera, begin talking. And when I get to the end of what I'm saying, I'm going to stop and just count for a second and then I'll get up and turn the off button, turn the camera off. What I want to say is be natural, but it's, it's 
It's a bit of a hard ask to ask someone to be natural um, because if you try and be natural, it's inherently not natural. It's very hard to try and be natural. It's like trying to go to sleep. It's just not going to work. What you need to do is to relax into the, into the mode of communicating. And I think the only way you'll, you'll do that is by familiarity. You'll get used to doing it. So expect that your first attempt is likely to be awful and you'll look frigid and stilted and bleh. And right, learn from that one, put it aside, do it again and aim to, to get yourself to get more relaxed into the whole process. The more it can be like you talking to somebody directly, the better it's going to come across. So... Again, what I'm saying is here is don't force it, just relax. And remember, you're going to be doing this several times over and it, it will get better.